Seated comfortably in any seated posture with eyes gently closed, spine upright, back of the head in line with the spine. We begin this session opening our mouth wide and inhaling and exhaling. Every inhale is going to fill our lungs completely. Every exhale will empty our lungs totally. This is the Ujjayi that you're going to teach any beginner. You're going to teach Ujjayi to beginners because you're going to learn how to do Ujjayi properly on your own. Not because you're doing him or her a favor, but because you're doing yourself a, pray, a favor. So you're going to open your mouth wide and you're continuing to inhale and continuing to exhale. Making sure the puraks are filling you up beyond capacity. Making sure your rechaks are emptying you beyond capacity. And if you're teaching someone Ujjayi, you're going to make sure that you know the benefits of Ujjayi. Ujjayi comes from the word Ujjapi. Ujjapi means victorious and on top. It is the best breath that you can have. It is something which has no contraindications in the categories of the hidden dangers of pranayama. It activates our Vishuddhi Chakra. And for those of us who don't know what Vishuddhi Chakra is, it's absolutely okay. It beautifies our voice, clears mucus from the throat, the dryness in the throat the <clears throat> that we need to do occasionally. Ujjayi is a breath for each one of us. A must do for thyroid. Imbalances in the thyroid. More secretions or less secretions. Bringing us into hypo or hyper situations. Messing up our endocrine systems, ductless glands at the throat, the thyroid and the thymus. So if we want to keep clarity in thought and vision, creativity, a beautiful voice, reverse fears, balance our secretions of the thyroid and thymus gland, Keep clarity in the entire larynx, epiglottis, and glottis areas. We ought to do ujjayi, the breath which has its name from the word on top, the best, victorious. Close your mouth half, continue breathing in ujjayi. And now close your mouth completely. The open mouth, the half closed mouth and the complete closed mouth is for each one of us. Regardless of whether we are beginners, we are going or we are advanced. Whether we are in the ninth grade or whether we are certified in having finished our education, we are still going back 
to the basics. And because we opened our mouth wide, in our inhales and exhales, we know exactly where to contract in the epiglottis and the glottis. Learn Ujjayi in a way that you can teach someone so that you can learn it better. Continue. Last three rounds of a closed mouth Ujjayi. Breathe in Ujjayi, inhaling and exhaling, contracting the epiglottis and the glottis so that singing gets better for singers. Non-singers can start singing. The thyroid secretions are balanced. There is clarity in speech. There is activation of the ductless glands. There is a feeling of completeness, of fullness. One feels energized, clearer throat, helps in the upper chest infection reversal, decreases fear, strength in the vocal cords, and clarity. Now, you will be happy to know that besides all the benefits of the throat that were mentioned, there are many more because the lungs get full and the lungs get empty. So here in the last round of inhale and exhale, make sure you fill your lungs with oxygenated air and empty them with deoxygenated air so that we reverse thyroid, and along with that, lung disorders like asthma, bronchitis, congestion in the chest, fibrosis, those knots that may come up over a period of time due to different situations in the lungs, the nodules. Last round in Ujjayi. Discontinue, watch your breath. Now, when you're watching your breath, just make sure that you're consciously taking awareness of cool air going into the nostrils and warm air coming out. This is your time out for that. Swarayog or Anapan. We now start with something which is a Shodhan Kriya, not a Pranayam. It's called Kapalapati. Where we are going to start with active exhalations with a count. So we're going to do one, where we're going to exhale and pull the tummy in. Then two. Then three. Then four. And so on. Keep going. One pause, two pause, three pause, and go on, increasing them in an ascending order.
And now start with the figure that you stopped on. I stopped at 11. So I'm going to start. Pause, then 10, that way. I am done in my descending order. How about you? For those who are done, super chat, put in the chat box, done. So maybe Anjana started with 16 and came down to one. I started with 11 sets and came down to one. So you did one plus, 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 plus in the total of the descend, ascending and the descending order, Kapal Bhati. And celebrate and pat yourself actually like I am on your back. Say, wow, well done. Pat yourself on the back because you did numerous Kapal Bhatis. Now, normal Kapal Bhatis to listen to the benefits. Reverse acidity, gas, flatulence, constipation, indigestion, pain and agony in any part of the body. Cirrhosis of the skin, excessive hair fall, bringing back the counts of the B12 and many more where it comes to cholesterol, blood pressure, diabetes. And think of any, as it is said by the masters, 99.99 pratishat rogo se mukti. So first, as you continue doing normal Kapal Bhati, think of that one health ailment that you want to reverse with Kapal Bhati. What is that one thing that you want from Kapal Bhati? Tell me. Kudos to her. Aditi says Ayushya means longevity. Continue Kapal Bhati. And you will know every time from this day onwards, from today onwards, from this moment onwards, from now onwards, every time you do Kapal Bhati, after you have stopped and completed it, watch your breath. Watch the breath to a point where you've not changed it, but your every cell has become the breath. And you will notice how it has slowed down. Now, in yoga, they say a human being's ayushya, whether dirga or long, short, whatever, is predetermined by the number of breaths she's going to take. So, we need to slow down our breaths to have a longer lifespan. Now, those who don't want to live long need not do Kapal Bhati. This is for those who want to live long. Okay, so first of all, if you don't want to live long, don't do Kapal Bhati. I feel it's a good idea to even exit today's session. Because Pranayam and Kapal Bhati, which means breathing Kriyas and a Shodhan Kriya, are for those who want Dirga Ayushya. The rest we will handle later. Have you got this? If you have, type got it in the chat box. Got it. Kapal Bhati is for those who want Dirga Ayushya. After going to the chat box, do again 51 more Kapal Bhatis, whether fast or slow, 
whether intense or sukshma, 51 more kapalbhatis before we move on to the next. Watch your breaths post kapalbhati to check if what the masters said is true. The master said that if you slow down your breath, you're going to live longer. They experienced it because they believed in their masters. How about you? See if your breath has not only slowed down, but has gone in a rhythm, in a resonance, in a pace. Watch that breath. We're now going to do what is called the bellows breath in the West, Bhastrika. In Bhastrika, we are going to twist today. So we're going to completely twist to any one side so that shoulders are parallel to the wall on that side. We're going to twist our head again so that we look into the front. And we're going to inhale and exhale. So our Kapalbhatis will have inhalations too. Change sides. Continue. Fill your lungs and empty them in this twist. Continue. Stay so twisted that your shoulders are parallel to the wall on the side. It's fine to use a little force, but not so much that you go beyond your capacity. It's fine to feel a little exhaustion because it is about going to a stretching to a capacity beyond yours. It is fine to cough. It is fine to take a pause. It's only not okay to push yourselves where the joy goes off. The joy of filling your lungs with oxygen, of emptying them of deoxygenated should not go off. But yes, do push yourselves a little. You're still twisted. You're still doing pasrika. And come back. Discontinue Bhastrika. To start with abdominal breaths. Inhale, inflate the abdomen like a balloon. Hold the inhalation. Exhale, bring it back to normal. Inhale, inflate the abdomen like a balloon. Hold the inhalation. Exhale, bring it back to normal. Inhale, inflate the abdomen like a balloon. Egg them full like a pregnant woman. Hold. Back to normal. Abdominal breaths will help us push the pe pelvis down. Concentrate so focused that your breath is down at the peridium. Inhaling the breath without lifting the shoulders and shrugging has gone into every tendon, ligament, organ and cell in the entire abdomen that includes stomach, liver, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, large intestine, small intestines, appendix, everything. At that time, it has pushed your pelvis down and out. And when you start exhaling, all those organs, tendons, ligaments, muscles, glands come back to normal. Abdominal breaths.
three more abdominal breaths being very steady overcoming restlessness abdominal breaths are extremely meditative because they help us dwell upon our organs with awareness So we now do after the next abdominal breath discontinue to divide your inhales and exhales into two parts it is called khanda pranayam khanda is a blouse piece in maharashtrians they call it khanda blouse piece divide into half half and half part continue stay undistracted 